Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul. Thanks once again taking for time this evening to watch this video. We appreciate you coming to our channel and watching these videos. Tonight I want to talk a few minutes on neonatal hyperbilirubinemia, simply increased bilirubin in the newborn. As always, I invite you to visit my website at www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net where we have posted hundreds of videos covering so many subjects as you prepare for your USMLE. Tonight let me talk a few minutes about neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. You see, it's a very very common thing. 60% of newborn infants will have high bilirubin level. In fact, the total serum bilirubin may be higher than 6 milligrams per deciliter in the first few days, first few weeks of life in many, many infants. So it's a benign condition in majority of babies. The task is to identify which is benign and uh, which is pathological because there are complications like kernectoris associated with hyperbilirubinemia. So in order to prevent Kernectoris, we should take care, I mean, we should identify the cause of hyperbilirubinemia. Now, how does this thing happen? You see, in the newborn infants, just like in adults, the bilirubin is formed from the breakdown of RBCs. So, when the RBCs are breakdown, bilirubin forms, that is the unconjugated bilirubin. This unconjugated bilirubin, it binds to albumin, then it is carried to liver. In the liver, unconjugated bilirubin undergoes conjugation. So in the liver, we have conjugated bilirubin. This conjugated bilirubin is secreted in the bile, and the bile, it passes through the bile duct and to the common bile duct. It reaches the second part of the duodenum and it empties into the intestines. And from the intestines, the conjugated bilirubin, it is excreted. But what happens if the excreted time, if it is prolonged, this conjugated bilirubin stays in the intestines and it is absorbed back into enterohepatic circulation. So that's why in newborn babies, if the abdominal excretion, I mean if the intestinal excretion is less, they are more prone to get hyperbilirubinemia because all this conjugated bilirubin excreted into the intestines, it is, it is uh, absorbed back into enterohepatic circulation. So that's why in breastfeeding jaundice, you say, don't get confused between these two, breast feeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice. Breast feeding jaundice is due to inadequate breast feeding. As the baby is not adequately breast fed, he does not excrete his balls. So the stools say stay. And that conjugated bilirubin excreted into the intestines is absorbed back into intrahepatic circulation. That's why whenever there is dehydration, whenever the baby is not f being fed, he is at particular risk for neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. So breastfeeding jaundice, remember it as lack of breastfeeding jaundice. That way you don't get confused it with breast milk jaundice, which is um, jaundice due to milk intolerance or some kind of side effects to breast milk. So lack of breast milk breastfeeding jaundice is due to inadequate breastfeeding. But pathological jaundice, it can appear within the first 24 hours. So pathological jaundice, if it is appears in the first 24 hours, it is always a pathological cause. There are many reasons for that. ABO incompatibility, RH incompatibility, galactosemia, G6PD deficiency, hereditary spirocytosis, cephalhematoma, bowel obstruction syndrome, 
hypothyroidism. Those are the common causes of pathological jaundice. Whenever you see pathological jaundice, you should do the testing to identify those causes. Now, signs and symptoms, you always see yellowish discoloration of the skin and uh, first it starts in the face, then it goes to the neck, chest, abdomen and extremities. So, yellowish discoloration is in the feet is more severe than the yellowish discoloration in the face because the uh, level of bilirubin obviously increased and also you see drowsiness changes in muscle tone and uh, petechia, hepatosplenomegaly, microcephaly. All these things are seen in uh, pathological jaundice along with the lowest discoloration of skin. Now diagnostic uh, tests. The most commonly used uh, thing are engram ectorometer and transcutaneous bilirubinometer. These instruments, they measure bilirubin in the blood. You should also do blood typing, sepsis workup for rubella, toxoplasmosis, typhoid, galactosemia, G6PD deficiency testing, whenever there is the possibility for pathological jaundice. And treatment of uh, jaundice, it always depends on the cause. If it is breastfeeding jaundice, you should uh, uh, feed the baby more often like every two hours. You should avoid water supplementation. Breast milk jaundice, it is um, uh, continue, you don't have to discontinue breastfeeding even in breast milk jaundice. You have to, sometimes you have to stop it and give some supplementation and start it back. But whenever it is severe, you, you should go for phototherapy and uh, um, if, and also you can go for uh, 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 transfusion therapy. Those are the main issues, phototherapy and uh, transfusion therapy. You see, when you treat neonatal hyperbilirubinemia, it always you should take the age of the baby into consideration. That's why we have the nomogram. The bilirubin levels are plotted against the age of the baby in hours. So nomogram is very, very important. And whenever hyperbilirubinemia causes neurological symptoms, the acute manifestations are called the encephalitis, encephalopathy, whereas the chronic manifestations are called kernicterus. So kernicterus is the term we use for chronic manifestations of neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. And um, kernicterus is more prone to occur whenever there is an uh, increase in unconjugated bilirubin, bilirubinemia because you see what can cause blood-brain barrier? it is uh, unconjugated bilirubin that causes the blood brain barrier. Now let us uh, take a simple case. In a station baby, six day old, has um, poor breastfeeding, irritability, rash, yellowish discoloration of face, chest and trunk and extremities, and he was born full term through C-section, discharged third day, he went home and uh, there is no ABO incompatibility, and uh, there is no history of spirocytosis, direct Coombs test is negative, lab studies are normal except indirect bilirubin 31.7 milligram percentage, direct bilirubin is 0.8 milligram percentage. What is the first in intervention to treat hyperbilirubinemia in this patient? The first intervention is phototherapy because Bilirubin level already 31.7. At that point, you should start the baby on phototherapy. There are a few key words in this question. A baby of East Asian descent, people of East Asian descent are at higher risk for this problem. Baby was born through C-section. You see, when the baby is born through C-section, they are more prone to get breastfeeding jaundice. This is why, because um, let me explain. When through the vaginal delivery, what happens is there is more stimulation of oxytocin. Whenever there is more stimulation of oxytocin, more breast milk is produced. More, more breast milk means there will be frequent feeding of the baby. More frequent feeding of the baby means more movement of the bowels. More movement of the bowels means more excretion of bilirubin. 
So it is simple. So baby born through vaginal delivery is at less risk for breastfeeding jaundice than the baby born through C-section because in C-section there is not much stimulation of oxytocin.